Okay, more work with 7, 3. Let's take a look at this kind of problem. Now it says that this, find the value of sine of x minus y. If x is an angle between 0 and pi over 2, that's kind of how we read that, and y is an angle between 0 and pi over 2. Sine of x is 9 over 41, sine of y, 7 25ths. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll just start with the fact that they ask us to take the sine of x minus y. According to our identities, sine of x minus y is sine cosine, cosine sine of x and y. Now, one thing that I notice here is that they give us half of the info. Uh, take a look. So, they give us the fact that the sine of x is 9 over 41, sine of y is 7 over uh, 25, so that means we can plug those in here for each one, right? So the sine of x is 9 over 41, and the sine of y is 7 over 25, but there's something that's missing here. We do not know the cosines of each one of these. They noticeably left that out. So what should we do? Well, this is where the uh, range of values for x and y come into play, right? If we look right up here and examine that x is between pi, uh, 0 and pi over 2, same with y between pi over, uh, 0 and pi over 2, that leads us to the conclusion that uh, both x and y are first quadrant angles, right? And if all students take calculus, uh, that means that we're dealing with nothing but positive values in here for cosine. So here's what we're going to do. Let's make right triangles out of these, just like so. Let's put x and y right where the hypotenuse meets the horizontal leg. We have right triangles going on here. And let's fill in the signs for each one of those using SOHCAHTOA. So if the sine of x is 9 over 41, we have opposite over hypotenuse. If the cos, uh, sorry, the sine of y is 7 over 25, there we go. And then just with a little Pythagorean theorem work here, uh, if we are looking at, let's call that A, and let's just call uh, this one over here A. So finding each one of these here, we have A squared plus 9 squared equals 41 squared. Likewise, over here, we have a squared plus 7 squared equals 25 squared. So if we square those numbers and then subtract uh, 41 squared minus 9 squared, square root that value, do the same thing over there, square 25, I think that's 625, uh, and then subtract 49, we get 576, uh, take the square root of that, and we end up uh, finding out what a is. Great. So now that we know what those sides are, do you see now how it's possible to find the cosine now of each one of those angles adjacent over hypotenuse? So now with adjacent over hypotenuse here, cosine x, 40 over 41, which now, uh, where's cosine of x? Ah, it's right there. Right? Let's put that in blue. So I can put it in red. And so then we're going to plug that right in there. And then if the cosine of y is 24 over 25, we're going to plug that right in there. Okay? Now focusing on this exclusively here, let's just do top times top, bottom times bottom, and then let's subtract the two numbers after we multiply 9 times 24 and 40 times 7. Uh, eventually we end up here, negative 64 over 1,025. There is our answer. Let's do another one like that. Okay, let's find sine of x minus y if sine of x is 4 ninths, sine of y is 1 fourth, and notice right here we're still in the first quadrant for both. So sine of x minus y, there we are, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, with a minus sign there, we don't switch the signs here. And now, this is uh, another point I want to make here in, in terms of the substitution. I think I said this a little bit before in class, and that is, how do we properly substitute this information correctly into our value here? Notice the sine of x is 4 ninths. Notice what it is not saying, that x is 4 ninths. So I can't tell you how many times I see students do this. Wah, wah. Don't just put 4 ninths in there for x. Remember, what this is saying is that the entire sine of x is 4 ninths. So what we're going to do 
Okay, so we're going to replace that entire sine of x with 4 ninths. Likewise, notice the only other information they gave us was that the sine of y is 1 fourth. So let's replace the sine of y with 1 fourth. What we don't know is the cosine of x and the cosine of y. This is when we need those right triangles, right? So let's make one right triangle. Let's put it over here, I guess. With the first piece of information, let's make one with x. Let's make a second one. y. Sine of y was one fourth, so that's opposite over hypotenuse. The second one, opposite over hypotenuse. Pythagorean theorem here. Let's look at the red one here with x. Pythagorean theorem, 9 squared, that's 36. We have to subtract the 4 squared. Remember, I've noticed some people always adding the two numbers they give you. and It doesn't happen all the time, right? Sometimes they give us hypotenuse. We have to take the hypotenuse square, get 36 minus the 4 so 36 minus 4, we get the square root of 20. Wait a minute, we can simplify that square root of 20. Um, 4 times 5, so it should be 2 square roots of 5. Down here, 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 1, we get uh, 15, square root 15. There's no perfect squares that go into 15. So there we are. So now we can fill in the cosine for each one of those. Let's do that right now. Cosine of y. Remember, y is down here, the blue triangle. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, so we have square root 15 over 4. Cosine of x, red triangle there. Cosine of x would be 2 square roots of 5 over 9. Now it's time to simplify this thing here. Remember earlier I was saying you get a lot of 6s and 2s. These are the kind of problems where it actually doesn't happen, right? And you can see that if we keep on going here. Um, but what we do see here is be the 9 and the 4, and the 9 and the 4 make 36. We have a common denominator right here. So I'm going to write 36 in there. Here, 4 times square root 15. Can't do anything with it, right? So let's write it as 4 square root 15. Next, minus sign, 2 square root 5. There we go. I think can think of maybe one other thing that we can do here and that is reduce our fraction. We can take 36, four goes into, uh, two goes into that, two goes into the two, and two goes into the four. So I guess we can now reduce this and say, well, that's 18, divide that by two, divide that by two is two square roots of 15, and then minus the square root of five. Hooray.